Okay, guys, this is obviously a sign that I should be wrapping this up for tonight because I've, I've started this, uh, this video twice and screwed it up twice pretty egregiously both times. Uh, you, you, you probably caught the fact that in the last one I recorded, I was suddenly having a really hard time doing math that I think I'm usually really good at doing in my head. So that means something, and it means I need to probably wrap this up. But I want to get through this, this next topic, which is to talk about odd and even functions uh, and I have to, I have to caveat this and say, it's kind of not that important for what we're doing at first. It's important to get to the point where you understand it because you should be able to do these integrals and say, I know what this means. I know what I'm doing. And it's not just following a cookbook without understanding what the calculation communicates or shows or, or signifies. But for the moment, it's okay if you say, well, I'm going to uh, find a four A series uh, to represent my function that I'm that I'm analyzing, and I have a cookbook for for generating the four A coefficients. So I'm just going to churn through that. I'm going to turn the wheel, and the cookbook will generate the the coefficients that I need. But you're going to get a lot of extra cardiovascular exercise by doing integrals. You don't have to because they should be identically zero if you know all of the rules about odd and even functions. So do you need to know this? It's one of those things you will learn. And, and if you are fluent in Fourier analysis, you'll just know it. And you're not going to sit down and memorize these rules because it will just make sense to you. For the moment, we're going to have kind of like a, a, a recipe, a, a cookbook to follow in order to generate the Fourier coefficients. So you don't absolutely have to get this part. But I'm not allowed ethically to continue without talking about odd and even functions. So we're going to just kind of go through it really quickly. Um, and we're not going to do all the rules. We're just going to say these are out there. You can go look them up. And you will get to the point where in doing these calculations, you'll either say, I know that term's going to be zero. I'm not going to calculate it. Or you're going to get to the point where you say, oh, I calculated that. Yeah, and if I look back, it, it, I, I knew it had to be zero, right? Sure. And the fact that it comes out to zero... That, that does that thing for me in a mathematical analysis where I say, like, I'm happy at this result because everything is consistent and I can see the, the internal logic for what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to try to share this document and see if that works. Uh-oh. Let me, before we do anything else. Oh, there's too many documents open. Sorry to make you guys wait. I hate that too. All right. 4A stuff. Odd and even functions. I'll open it. And now I'm going to share the screen. 4A stuff. Odd and even functions. It's a, it, you know, a really great feeling to be here at 3.18 in the morning in the science building. And the lights in my office just went out. And I absolutely have not been a little bit spooked the entire time I've been here today uh, for the reasons that we all are. So I'm going to go turn on the lights. Hang on half a second. Okay, odd and even functions. Let's talk about these. Oh, and I have a, a definition in these notes that I, I wrote down without really thinking about too hard, which is to say it's wrong. Um, I said, oh, uh, we're going to use these Fourier methods we're developing to, to study partial differential equations the same way we use the uh, power series to study ordinary differential equations. The difference is that a partial differential equation is one with more than one independent variable. That's not enough. I really should be saying it's a differential equation where I have a, a derivative term that shows up that's taken with respect to a different variable than another deri derivative term that shows up. You've already seen partial differential equations. We, we derive the wave equation, right? That's got d by dx stuff and d by dt stuff in it. So those are two different variables that we're taking a derivative with respect to. So don't worry about this definition. It's garbage. I haven't thought about this stuff rigorously in 20 years. I just use it. And so I haven't thought about how to write the rules down for, for being precise and careful in my, my analysis. So put that definition aside. 
we're going to talk about odd and even functions. And so we need two prototypical example functions. And the ones we're going to use are these very badly sketched sine of x and cosine of x functions. Sine of x is an odd function. What that means is if we take sine of some negative x, it's equal to negative sine of x. So here's some distance negative x. Calculate that value. It's equal to the negative of sine of that same value of x. Measure some distance out from zero plus x, whatever that is. Calculate that value, right? Now go the negative, it's off the graph, but go the negative same amount of distance and sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x. So if a function has an argument and you switch the sign on it and you get that negative sign in front, that's an odd function. It's so hard to talk through this stuff, but I think that having it in front of you will hopefully explain what I'm getting at. The language feels bad and clumsy for this. Or again, it could just be this three something in the morning. Cosine of x, this is an even function because if I go some distance minus x, so away from the x equals zero uh, uh, midpoint here, if I go some distance off here, write that down, calculate the value of cosine of negative x, it's equal to the value of cosine of x where I've gone in the positive direction. So just pick a value, go out to cosine of, you know, plus some number. All right, calculate that value, write it down. Now go the negative, same amount of distance, calculate cosine of negative x, write that down. It's the same number. So we have an odd function, sine of x, and an even function, cosine of x. There are plenty of other odd and even functions. These are just two to look at to get the idea of what we're talking about. Okay, understanding how odd and even functions work is a good way to know if an integral of that function over some domain will be zero. So if we take an integral from x is equal to negative some number to x is equal to positive some number of an odd function of x, that will always be zero. And the reason is that the area under the curve on the right-hand side, the, the plus x, the right-hand side of x equals zero, is the opposite of the area under the curve on the left-hand side. So let's go back to sine of x. Odd function, sine of x. If I go some distance x out here, and I calculate the area under this curve. Calculate that area. Write it down. It's a positive number. Now go negative x, the same amount. Calculate the area here. It's a negative amount, right? This area is the same in magnitude as this area, but has the opposite sign. So if I'm integrating an odd function symmetrically on this interval, it will always be zero, right? The area under the curve on the right-hand side of x equals zero is the opposite of the area under the curve on the left-hand side. All right, so let's just consider some functions. I just picked these. x cubed, that's an odd function. I can see that, right? I go to some positive x value. I go to some negative x value. It's the same magnitude, but they have opposite signs. And that's true as I go out, you know, the negative x values or positive x values, it just, it stays true. Uh, and the function sinc of x, so that's the sine of x divided by x. This is an even function. So if I go some distance away from the x-axis, I get some number. I go some distance away from the x-axis in the opposite direction, I get the same number. I can do that with different values. I can go a little further out, I get that number. I go the same distance out in the pot plus x direction, I get the same number. This is an even function. All right, so we have rules for multiplying odd and even numbers, right? An odd number times an odd number is an odd number. You can do it. You can convince yourself by picking some at random. That is not a proof, right? We know how proofs work. We can do a proof for this. It's not hard at all. You can't factor either of those two numbers into a product that contains two. So if you write down the prime factorization of the product of those two odd numbers, that prime factorization does not contain two, therefore it's an odd number. Okay, even number times an even number gives you an even number. Why? Same argument, factorize, or let me just say factor, the first number, a two pops out. Factor the second number, another two pops out, but I don't need it because I've already got one two that shows up in the product, so it's an even number. Odd number times an even number, gives us an even number. Why? Well, because I can factor that first even number 
pops out a two and then it shows up in the product as a two. So I'm done. Okay. There's the same kind of stuff for functions. Even in odd functions have rules about their products and rules about a bunch of other stuff too. But I'm just trying to point at this to say, this is a thing that exists and you'll learn about it and know how to use it. I'm not going to go through all the rules. I'm barely going to go through the one we're going to talk about. This same stuff exists for functions, but we have to look at the rules. So odd function times an odd function gives us an even function. It's different, right? Here we had odd times odd number, odd number. Odd function times odd function, even function. Odd function times an even function, odd function. Well, that's different too, right? Even function times even function, even function. All right, same as with numbers. Different from numbers, different from numbers, I think. Like I said, I'm too tired to be doing this, but we'll, we'll get through this. All right, so I picked a, a function at random, x cubed. That's an odd function, and I can prove that. All right, so I think about f of x. It's x cubed. Well, what's f of negative x? Oh, it's negative x cubed. Two of the minus signs give me a plus sign. I've got one minus sign left over, so I get minus x cubed which is negative f of x. So x cubed is odd. Sync function, I do the same thing. f of x is sine of x over x. Plug in negative x for my argument. I get sine of negative x divided by negative x. So I pop that out, negative sine of x divided by negative x. The minus signs cancel, and I get sine of x over x. That's f of x. So f of negative x is equal to f of x. So sync is an even function. Well, then this product, x cubed, times sync of x is an odd function times an even function, which gives me an odd function. And we already know then that if I integrate from x is equal to some negative a, whatever that a is, to x is equal to the same a but positive, if I multiply x cubed times sync x for my integrand, that's an odd function times an even function, giving me an odd function. So I'm integrating an odd function from x is equal to negative a to x is equal to plus a, and I will get zero. All right. We know that if a function is odd or even about the midpoint of the domain we're integrating it over, we can jump to some quick conclusions about the value of that integral. So we just did odd function. Even function has another rule. You just say, oh, I only have to integrate it from half of the, over half the distance, and I put a two in front of it. It's not a very cute rule. It doesn't do much for me. Okay. Um, Knowing if a function is even or odd is helpful in figuring out how it behaves in integrals. And that means it helps us to do Fourier analysis, which is essentially synonymous with doing a bunch of integrals to get our coefficients that we're going to manipulate with. You can learn all of this from any math methods textbook. Uh, I've got a, a, a book I adore. Uh, I think it's called Mathematical Methods for Physics and Engineering. That's not the part I remember. The part I remember is the author's names, Riley, Hobson, and Benz. I'll loan my copy to you sometime if you want it. Uh, but I loaned it out to somebody recently, so I can't hand it off to you in the next few days. And besides, we're all keeping our distance. So if you want to take a look at it, it's my favorite math textbook I've ever used. Um, and it's a great reference. Uh, I didn't have that around. So I'm working from Advanced Engineering Mathematics by Greenberg. Uh, we're going to dig into its, its nomenclature. We're going to use its nomenclature a little bit in the next section where we dig into uh, calculating for a series of periodic functions. Anyway, all this stuff you can learn from any math methods textbook. It's pretty straightforward. Is it worth learning? Well, you're just going to know it after doing enough integrals, like I said. And we're not going to, therefore, we're not going to dig into it here because it would turn into just here's homework problems. Calculate this integral. Is it zero? Yeah, well, it should be because... We set it up to be, and that doesn't seem like it's, it's as useful as calculating some stuff and learning those rules in the process of doing something we're, we're interested in. Okay, is every function either even or odd? No, but you can always decompose it into the sum of an even part plus an odd part, and that's also pretty easy to prove. There are a slew of other uh, things we can say about, about odd and even functions. Like there's another set of rules beyond the one we just talked about. I'm not going to dig into those. Let me pull up a really quick calculation if I can find it. Uh, let's see. Where is the plot? Hang on. 
Okay. Because my, my drawings are so terrible, let's look at a Wolfram Alpha plot of sync of X. All right, so you can see pretty clearly here what I'm saying about it being an even function, right? If I go out to X is equal to negative two, I've got some value, what is it? Uh, I don't know, it looks like the cursor's not actually telling me what the value is. Okay, it's between 0.4 and 0.6. I think it's a little bit less than 0.5. I go to x is equal to two, same thing. I go to x is equal to negative four, it's negative something less than 0.2. I go to x is equal to four, ah, it's the same thing. This is an even function. All right. This is an odd function, x cubed. Let's go to x is equal to negative four. I don't know what that is. Like x is equal to negative 65 maybe? x is equal to negative 70? Let's go to x is equal to four. Same thing. x is equal to six. I don't know, 210, something like that. x is equal to negative six. Same thing. Okay, so sync of x, even function, x cubed, odd function. I multiply x cubed, odd, by sync of x, even. Odd function by even function gives me an odd function, and then I'm integrating it from negative a to a, and I get zero. We could, uh, just for, for last, let's change this from negative two pi to negative 20 pi, and two pi to 20 pi, it better still be zero. Ah, thank goodness. So I still have the same cancellation of the two halves. What if I do negative 0 0.002 to x is equal to 0 0.002? It better still identically cancel, and it does, right? Okay. So, that's a lot of glare off those glasses. We have, in good faith, told you now that there are rules for manipulating even and odd functions, and it can make your life simpler. So learning them is not a bad idea, but I would never encourage somebody to sit down and measure, to, to memorize a rule book like that. Um, look it up. I don't know, just pull it up on Wikipedia if you don't feel like getting your math methods textbook out. Look it up, and when you're doing these calculations, keep that in mind. Okay, so it is now extremely late, and yet I'm going to try to record the longest video of the night and upload that so that you have it tomorrow morning so that you can, you know, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed bright eyed and bushy -tailed, uh, watch a video about Fourier analysis. Okay, thank you for your attention.